Hi folks, and welcome to Open Analysis Live, we're back. So today what we're gonna do is something a little bit different from the tutorials that we've been doing, which are focusing on reverse engineering. In this tutorial, we're gonna focus a little bit more on the attribution side or identification side of malware analysis. Now, if you guys caught our last stream talking about black matter ransomware, what we did was we compared black matter ransomware with dark side ransomware, and we showed that through binary comparisons, code overlap, code reuse, that we could attribute black matter ransomware to dark side and determined that the same developer developed both of them. Now, after the stream, we got a lot of questions saying, that's all well and good, but you already had the uh, dark side ransomware sample annotated in IDA. What if you don't have that? And that's very true. If you're working at a uh, threat intel company, you probably have a large catalog of labeled malware. And so this type of attribution is very easy, right? You just compare your new sample, your unknown sample against your catalog of known malware. But what happens if you don't have that catalog? If you're starting from zero, or maybe you're an independent researcher and you haven't built a big catalog of known annotated malware. Well, what we're gonna do today is give you four tips, four different free resources that we use to identify unknown malware. Now, not all these resources are gonna work all the time. You usually have to use a bunch of them, and this is definitely not a complete list. There are hundreds of different resources, but these are just the four that we actually use personally all the time, pretty much every day. So I figured I'd go through those and then there'll be like one bonus one at the end uh, where we talk about Lumina or Lumina in Ida and how that's also helpful. I think most people are familiar with that. Uh, we'll save it for the end, but right now let's get into four tips for identifying unknown malware if you don't have a big corpus of labeled malware. So here we have our sample unknown.bin. Now for the purpose of this video, we're actually gonna use that dark matter ransomware that we did the stream on. So we're gonna pretend we don't know what it is. Also, it's important to keep in mind that this sample has been out for months and months. So there's been a lot of time for the community to add notes to these popular malware attribution resources. So it's gonna seem pretty clear what this is right away. However, at the time when it first came out, a lot of this analysis hadn't been done. So we're just gonna have to keep in mind that these resources maybe wouldn't have been as helpful when the sample first came out. But I think by using all of them, we'll probably have a clear idea of at least where to start. So the first thing we wanna do is get a hash of this sample so we can start looking it up in our different resources. To do this, I have the Flare VM installed here, link in the video description below if you guys wanna install your own Flare VM. So what I can do here is I can just click and search for hash. I have hash, hash calc right here, drag the sample over, and I have uh, SHA-256 checked. So this is our SHA-256 hash of the unknown sample. Now I have a little notebook here that I'm gonna keep my notes in uh, so we can keep everything straight. So I'm just gonna paste that hash in here and I'm gonna tell me that it's a SHA-256 hash. All right, so we have a hash and we can start using our tools to look things up. What's the first tool to use? Well, obviously I think everybody knows what's coming next. It's gonna be virus total. So virus total is helpful depending in various levels, depending on whether you're paying for it or not. We're gonna assume that you're not paying for it. So all you have is the dog standard lookup API, no fancy VTL intelligence, no fancy YAR hunting or anything like that. Let's grab this hash and we'll paste it in here and we'll see what VT has to tell us. Now you can see already there's a lot of information here. Uh, I don't usually look at the detections. The anonymization of detections that has been trending in AV for many years kind of makes a lot of these useless. You can see some of these say black matter, but I guarantee at the time when this came out, none of them said black matter. These were pretty much all undetected. What I look for is the community notes. So here in the community notes, you'll have different people who are using VirusTotal leaving little notes about what they think the sample is. Now, obviously with a new sample, people haven't had time to analyze it. This note section may not always be populated, but it's always a good place to check first. So we can see this sample has been up for a long time and we can see there's lots of notes here. Lots of people uh, I think are calling it uh, black matter. So we have a name for it. However, when this came out, you know, you may not be able to rely on these comments. It's just a nice to have. There's also some other information in here we get to check out and see for free without having to use any of our own tools. You know, whether the binary is 32-bit uh, or 64-bit, what the section names are, uh, some information like that that might be helpful for us. 
I tend not to really look at that too much. I have my own tools for it, but it might be helpful for you. The next place to look is my personal favorite because it's an amalgamation of all kinds of different resources. And so that is Malware Bazaar. How bizarre. Sorry, I'm editing this right now and I just, I can't say Malware Bazaar without thinking about that stupid 90s song. I'm sorry, I just had to put it in. <laughs> this is a free site that is run by abuse.ch and it's basically just a collection of malware samples that are analyzed against a bunch of different cloud infrastructure and the results are populated in Malware Bazaar. So let's look up our sample here. Their search syntax uh, is a little bit different from Virus Total. You can't just paste the hash in. You have to type in SHA-256 and we'll paste the hash in here. All right, so we got a hit. Let's click on it. We can see already lots of tags here. Black Matter Ransomware looks good. And if we look down here, you can see these are all the different vendors that have run this sample and they usually give extra information. So for example, if you don't have a hatching uh, account, they're free, but if you don't have a hatching account, you can immediately just see some information from hatching. If you don't have a VMRay account, they're not free. You might be able to see some information from VMRay. Same with VirusTotal, you can get some information from it. Again, it's just an aggregation from all these different services in one place. Right now, it's the most useful free tool for quickly identifying what is that sample. And of course, you can always upload your sample. Uh, in this case, we're just searching for it. But if we had an account, we could upload the sample and it would actually process the sample for us and scan it. So for me personally, when I'm looking at public samples, this is a go-to for me. This is like the number one spot for trying to identify stuff. Again, we want to keep these free uh, resources that are available to everyone. So I, I don't want to talk about any paid services or anything like that. So what's interesting here is we do see a lot of detections. Um, Intizer is detecting it as uh, dark side, which is interesting. Remember, we attributed the sample to dark side when we did our comparative analysis stream. So that might be something interesting for us to look into if we were first looking at this sample. I'm gonna grab this link and I'm gonna throw it into our notes here. And I'm also going to copy over some information. So we think it might be dark side ransomware and we think it also might be uh, Black Matter Ransomware. Oops, I clicked on that. And we can actually, this is very cool. It's a very cool hunting feature. If you click on the tag, you can see all the other samples that are related to that tag. These are free to download, by the way. It's not like Virus Total. You don't have to pay for it. You can download these samples and analyze them. We'll type in uh, Black Matter as well. So our next stop, and this is where we get into sort of uh, a little more restrictive services that may not be available to everyone is Malpedia. Malpedia is free, but you do need to have someone vouch for you to get an account. Once you've logged in, they have a scan file service where you can drop the binary and it'll scan it for you. Now we can see here, no matches, which is, you know, that, that can happen. So it's not gonna be helpful for us, but many malware samples do have matches in here. If you don't have an account, you can still use the service. You can't scan files, but what you can do is say, look up different articles that have been written about the malware that you're trying to investigate. And if there is a publicly available YAR rule, you can use the publicly available YAR rule for free without logging into the account. So even if you don't have an account, it's still extremely useful for publicly available YAR rules and for linking to, I mean, you can see how many blog sources here, different blogs that have mentioned Black Matter. It's, it's hands down one of the best free threat intel sources that aggregates all kinds of different blogs and posts about malware under one roof. I would say this is probably, next to Malware Bazaar, this is probably our most used free public site for identifying malware. So we can see here, there's actually uh, a little reference for Black Matter. We're gonna put that in our notes here. And we could come back and take a look at some of these uh, blog entries once we start reverse engineering our malware. If we wanted to see if what the blog entries say the malware does match up with our reverse engineering. So that brings us to our fourth and final free resource, which is both a free and paid resource, uh, which is Intizer. Hey guys, me again. So. I uh, just want to do full disclosure here. We're big fans of Inizer. We're totally biased. We use them all the time. And in fact, they have an integration in Unpack Me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll that commercial for you guys right here.
So Intezer, you have to sign up for a free account, but once you do, they'll give you a quota and you can upload samples to be analyzed by their service, or you can also uh, look up samples that have already been analyzed. So what Intezer does is they will take your binary, they will break it apart into different components, and they will try to identify those components against their own database of similar components. They have a lot of marketing that calls things genomes and a bunch of other stuff I don't wanna focus on. Really, at the end of the day, they're doing code comparison at scale. That's, that's what it is. There's some marketing fluff in there, but for a free service that they're offering you, it's pretty useful, especially if all those other ones fail. If you have a new malware sample that none of the other resources can help you with, this is always a good place to check because you might get lucky and you might find some code overlap. And in this case, we definitely do. So let's post in our hash here. We'll analyze it, take a minute. And we can see here, not only do they tell us that this is black matter ransomware, but they also tell us that there's some code overlap with dark side ransomware, which is what we confirmed in our stream when we were actually reverse engineering the sample. So this is kind of a time saver. It is a limited quota. So if you're you know, analyzing hundreds of samples, it's not gonna work for you. But really the focus here is on individual researchers, free tools that you guys can use if you're stuck and you need to analyze some malware and you don't know what it is. This has, save me a bunch of time, much like Malpedia and Malwarebazaar. This is in the heavy rotation of things that I look at if I'm stuck on a sample, I can't identify it. I'll check here and see. In this case, we've gotten lucky and we have a good match with Black Matter Ransomware. But even if we hadn't had that match with Black Matter Ransomware, which was likely the case when this sample was new, we would have seen this small match with Darkseid and that would have allowed us to pull some Darkseid samples and do the comparative analysis that we showed you in our last stream. So this is a good place to start if it's a new sample, there's not much information on the other services and there's just not much information on the sample period, you can quickly check for code overlap with other known malware, grab that malware, and then proceed with the binary comparative analysis that we showed in our other stream. So between those four different services, you should at least have a place to start. If you have an unknown sample and you don't know what it is, there's nothing on VT for it, and you don't have any R rules that are matching it, at least you can begin to get an idea of where to start looking. So let's grab this ID and we'll throw it into our notes here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop over to IDA, we're gonna open that sample in IDA, and we're gonna use both the Intezer IDA plugin and Lumina to see if we can't understand a bit more about the sample without reverse engineering it. So let's do that now. So here we have our sample loaded up in IDA, and the first thing I'm gonna show you is the Intezer plugin. So we'll go edit, plugins, Intezer, and this is their free plugin available to everyone. And the only catch here, the thing that's kind of annoying to me is you have to actually upload the sample in their web interface first before you use the plugin. But the cool thing with the plugin is it will show you code overlap. Uh, so they're saying that this has been detected in dark side and they'll actually show you, you know, what function has been identified. And you can see they'll do a little markup here. So this can be really helpful for zeroing in on functions that you want to identify, functions that you think might be interesting or are linked to other uh, samples. In this case, it's a really good hint because it's telling us that this is a lot of overlap with dark side. And of course, as we showed in our other stream, this sample is actually a copy of dark side. So black matter is actually a ripoff of uh, dark side, which is very interesting. And we showed that through our own reverse engineering, but here you can see there's a pretty good hint by using the Intezer plugin that this is the case here. Now, the other trick that I want to show you with IDA is the Lumina plugin. It's not available for free, which is why we didn't include it in our four free resources. It's only available if you have a paid license for IDA, but it's incredibly helpful. What it does is it's similar to Intezer in that it uses code comparison to identify functions that the Lumina database knows but it's also crowdsourcing those functions. So you can actually push your functions up to the Lumina database. And in this case, if we do pull all metadata, and see these are all marked in green, you can see that somebody has helpfully pushed their IDB where they've already marked up all of these functions. So we basically get a lot of free work 
out of Lumina because somebody else in the community helpfully pushed up their marked up IDB. So it's not a free tool. Uh, you do have to have the paid version of Ida to use it, but it's incredibly useful if you do have the paid version. I would say definitely use this. It's very helpful. And between this and the Intensor plugin, you get some very interesting free Intel without having to do any reverse engineering. So we can see things like the hardware number generator is copied from Darkside ransomware. You can see like the AES encryption algorithms are copied over. What else do we have here? Get user processes. You can see like there's a lot of code that's been copied from Darkside and then between the Intensor plugin and Lumina, you can see what's been copied. So again, we haven't done any reverse engineering and we have a good idea of where to start analyzing the sample. We have a good idea of what the sample is or at least what it was copied from and where to start our reverse engineering. So there you go. I hope this has been helpful for you. I think probably a lot of you already use these resources, but I just want to make this video because we got a lot of questions after our stream about where to start if you don't have a sample to compare it to. Uh, if you don't know what the sample is, how do you get an idea of what it is? So here you go, four free resources. And if you pay for Ida, Lumina as well. I hope these are useful. And in the comments, uh, let us know what your favorite free open resources are for identifying malware. The link to our Discord is in the video description below if you guys want to join and chat with us, uh, give us some ideas for new videos to put out. We will be streaming later on in the week uh, with some very interesting low level reversing, talking about syscalls. I think those of you who are into that like uh, deep dive reverse engineering, I think it'll be interesting. I'm excited about it. And we have a special guest for that. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, keep exposing the mechanics behind the malware. Stay curious. You feel me. me again. One last thing before I go. Uh, I want to shill for our Patreon. If you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you sub Patreon slash OA Labs. And also, I started a Twitch channel where you can just watch me reverse engineer things. No tutorials, just live reverse engineering for a couple hours. So I'm shilling for that too. Uh, go check us out. OA Labs live on Twitch. Feel me